and welcome to MyChessBrain.com. I'm Chess Master Carl Bohr, and today we're going to look at one of my best games ever. This was played earlier in 2011, and I was the white, having the white pieces against a chess expert named Justin Notter. And the game started with the following moves. Here we have the Queen's Gambit, and my opponent played the Slav Defense. I chose to play the exchange variation. And now a special uh, opening that I've prepared for some time, starting with f3. It doesn't really have a name, so I call it the boar attack. My opponent played knight c6, and now e4. Now in this position it's important to notice that there is two black pieces attacking the d4 pawn. So we need to play the in-between move d5, attacking the knight. And here, I don't think my opponent played the best move. <clears throat> Usually my opponents play e6, or bishop g4, and uh, we're going to look at those moves in other videos on the boar attack, but in this game, we're going to see g6. So, I follow the principle uh, of developing the pieces with attack, knight f3, and here is, I think, uh, my, my opponent's first mistake. He should probably play knight on f to d7, and followed by bishop g7, overprotecting the center, but instead played knight takes knight, played queen takes knight, and now bishop g7. So here white has a large advantage due to the mobile pawns in the center. I begin an immediate attack with e5. Um, well, the knight has a limited number of places to go. Knight h5 is, is out because of g4, trapping the piece. And if knight g4, I think I was planning on playing bishop to b5 check, the following trick. And bishop d7 does not work because now the bishop is pinned and I can safely win a knight. Knight g8, I, I don't think this move really crossed my opponent's mind, but if he had played it, I could play bishop b5 check, followed by castle short, with the immediate threat of checkmate on f7, and a sustained attack. Okay, so that leaves knight d7. I continue the initiative, continue the attack, with e6, and here... I suppose pawn takes pawn is another way to play the position. And then knight f6. This is probably better than what happened. But even in this case, black's king is not going to be in good shape. And even if I lose the pawn on e6, I'm probably going to have really good compensation with an attack against his king. So after e6, he chose to play knight e5. Play bishop b5 check, and he only has one option, king f8. Now I have to move my queen. I chose queen e2. And now black uh, decides to counterattack with these pawn moves. And here, this next move, I'm really proud of because most engines, I should say any engine I've looked at this game with, uh, has not found this move. But most humans, eh, they do a pretty good job. Castles. But now, I guess this is one of the nicest uh, combinations of my career. I play queen takes e5. Gave a check. And another. He gives a check. Attacks my rook. I threaten mate in two. Two queens are on the board. He saves his rook, but then he loses his queen. I finish with a nice combination. And one last move, d6. Impossible to stop the, uh, the eventual queening of a pawn, and so he resigned. 
Hello, I'm Feeding Master Carl Bohr with MyChessBrain.com and today we're going to again continue our exploration of the Bohr attack which starts after the following moves. So, Queen's Gambit, Slav Defense, Exchange Variation, Knight C3, Knight F6, Pawn F3. Immediately planning to attack in the center with e4. Black has a number of moves. Today we're going to look at knight c6, d4 pawn is under attack, d5, knight e5, f takes e4. So in a number of uh, speed chess games I've encountered the following variation and even played the exact same win um, against grandmasters. After e6, knight f3, and black needs to be very careful in this situation. The bishop b5 check is a recurring theme. The mobile pawns in the center, and just in general the wide open lines of attack give white um, really good potential. Here, Pawn takes pawn is one of the most natural moves, but then white has a surprising move, e5, attacking the knight. And against the most natural move, knight e4, we can play bishop b5 check, he blocks, and a very strong move uh, that is hard to spot coming into this position, but take a moment and try to find it. In my, in my experience, this is one of the keys of chess mastery, is finding moves that threaten mate in one. As simple as that sounds. Moves that threaten mate in one are just as powerful as checks. So rook f1. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I just castle and have the same rook move thrown in? But in this case, it's not good because he can give a check which will win him a tempo to castle and actually have a better position. So it's important to play rook f1, which threatens queen takes f7 checkmate. And here, there's a number of ways for black to play. Queen e7 would not be good because of knight d5, with a double attack against the knight on e4 and the queen. Instead, black can try f5, or f6. In both cases, we're going to play pawn takes pawn. Knight takes f6, and now another surprising move. Queen e2 check. Black should definitely block this queen, after which we simply play bishop e3, it castles long, and have good compensation for the sacrifice pawn. Instead, uh, my trap game goes bishop e7, and now white is just winning. Rook takes f6, and now a checkmate in three moves. Queen h5 check, bishop h6 check, queen takes d5. Actually, it was checkmate in four, but we can see. A nice crisscross mate. I'm Carl Bohr with MyChessBrain.com. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture on the Bohr attack.